Wow, wow, wow. For three years, I have been searching for that one size fits all resin 3D printer for myself. Finally, after having enough time on my belt with this printer, I'm finally ready to give you my final thoughts. So the X1 took all the premium features from the big top dogs in resin printing and it combined it into this one magnificent machine. Now, there's a vat heater for your resin and there's also a resin recall system. Now the vat heater is definitely a premium option, but not very many other players seem to be implementing it. And the resin recall system, that's one that a lot of people are trying to implement, but most people have completely and entirely failed with. So that is not something that I can say with the X1. In fact, the resin recall system in all of my use has been bulletproof, it's absolutely incredible. It's designed with super thick, heavy duty industrial grade tubing such that when the pump and recall system is on, it won't collapse in on itself. That is actually something I have personally experienced myself with other resin machines. I'll turn the recall pump on and as it tries to suck resin in, the tube collapses in on itself and there's no way for it to actually pump the resin so nothing flows through the tube. If I have to pick something apart about the resin pump recall system is that you have to use the Apex Maker style bottle in order to actually take advantage of the whole system. The good thing is their resin bottles aren't proprietary and I've actually used some of this Shine Sing resin and the threading and the style of lid that goes on this bottle is the exact same as the Apex Maker resin. So this system works with either a manual mode or an automatic sensor pumping mode. Now in manual mode, you have to click the recall button or the pump button over and over again until your desired level of resin is in the vat or is out of the vat. In the sensor option, there is a sensor built into the vat and that will detect how much resin is or isn't in the vat. So the way that this system works is you take the resin bottle and you remove the lid that comes on your bottle. You then take the new lid that comes with the Apex Maker, that new lid has a couple hoses attached to it. You screw the brand new lid onto the bottle and one of those hoses, it's an air purge line. And what that's supposed to do is as you're pumping resin into the bottle, inevitably some air will get in there as well. And well, that's supposed to purge the air out of the bottle. This way it doesn't blow up like a balloon and eventually explode. So another really good thing about the X1 is that it uses the Chitubox file format. And that's absolutely fantastic because I don't use this machine all the time and I don't want to use a proprietary slicer, which is likely inferior. And I also don't want to be forced to use a slicer that has a yearly fee when I only use this printer two or three or four times a year. So after you've sliced your file, you have the option of printing directly from the USB drive or this machine does have onboard storage. Now I don't know how much, but you can transfer files from the USB drive to the onboard storage and then you can remove the USB drive and print directly from the onboard storage. So another rather unfortunate thing about this machine is that it doesn't really have great networking support. The screen seems to mention Wi-Fi here and there, but it doesn't seem to have an onboard Wi-Fi chip. Now, I do believe that it will support USB Wi-Fi, so if you have that available, you can go ahead and plug that into one of the two USB ports on the side and you should have Wi-Fi. But if you don't have Wi-Fi, there is an RJ45 port on the side as well, so you can get a hardwired internet connection. So one thing that I really wanted to get working but just simply couldn't is the file sharing. And apparently, if you have the X1 hooked up to Wi-Fi or Ethernet, you should be able to transfer a file directly from your computer over to the X1, but for some reason, I couldn't make that work. And I'm sure this is a user error, but my feeble brain couldn't wrap around how to hook that up. So unfortunately, I couldn't test that out. After having used this machine a lot more, I'm a lot more comfortable with the options on the screen. I'm a lot more comfortable with all of the capabilities of this machine. And I actually do really like the screen and the navigation on here. I do think there could be a little bit to be tweaked, but I am now comfortable with it. And only after about an hour or two of use did this happen. The features that come on the X1 are far and away more advanced than any resin printer I've ever used. The amount of customizability on this machine is just through the roof and there is no way that I can possibly name all the features, 
But to list just a few, you can change settings related to stop, pause, and start printing. So you can also change every single aspect of the motor speed from the minimum motor speed to the maximum motor speed to the motor speed when you're manually moving the bed. It's incredible how many parameters that you can change. You can even go as far as to change the notification buzzer frequency and volume, which is something that absolutely no printer on the market is going to offer except the X1. So there's an astronomical amount of hardware debugging tools, data logging, error logging, there's even settings for things like the number of times the FEP film has been popped off the vat, you can check how many times and how long the light source has been on, the list goes on and on and on. I honestly don't think there's anything that Apex makers left out of the X1, and if there is, it's probably something that no one's ever thought of and hasn't been implemented in any other machine prior. So the print quality results are going to be a place where a lot of people are going to make their final decision on whether they want to purchase the X1 or not. And I do have some results to show you. I'm not going to go into great detail on all the models I printed, but I did print from 50 microns up to 100 microns with some various settings and some tweaked parameters from the default built-in profiles. So I also used a couple varieties of resin. I used Creality's Fast Resin as well as the Apex Maker Fast Resin, so do it that way you will. So the pixel size on the X1, it's only 46 microns, and there is absolutely no way that it could possibly touch the detail quality resolution or anything of some of the newest 12K resin printers. Those 12K resin printers, well, their resolution is higher and their screen size is smaller. Of course, the detail on those machines is gonna be far superior to the X1. But we need to take a step back and look at what the goal of the X1 is and what it's trying to accomplish. So the X1, it's not trying to produce prestige level, prestige quality and detail 32 millimeter miniatures. The X1 is huge. It's a gigantic printer. The goal of the X1 is to print massive items. To put it plainly, the X1 does a good job at doing that. So another thing that the X1 can do really, really well, and that's because this is an MSLA printer, you can print tons and tons of 32 millimeter miniatures on the build plate all at one time, assuming you're willing to sacrifice just a little bit of detail. Everything you see on screen now is printed in one single hour on one build plate. There is absolutely no way that I could possibly produce this many miniatures on any other machine that I own. So what if you only need a few high quality miniatures or you aren't prepared to drop $1,500 on your own 3D printer? That is where the sponsor of today's video comes into play. PCB Way specials in high quality 3D printing at an affordable price. A basic 32 millimeter miniature can cost as low as only $4. But if you have other jobs that need to be 3D printed, they can also print in peak ASA, stainless steel, and even titanium. And in order to provide the highest quality service, PCB Way is going to actually perform a full model analysis of the file you upload. That's going to ensure when your print arrives, it will be exactly as you envisioned it. PCB Way helps support the channel and it would go a long way if you checked out the link in the description. Thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. So how about the printing speed? Because Apex Maker is advertising 180 millimeters per hour. And well, I don't actually know if it achieves that speed because I don't know how to test that. But what I can say is this machine prints blisteringly fast and to be completely honest with you, I have no idea why anyone would possibly want to print faster. And as I've already mentioned, if you're printing a bunch of small items, well, this is an MSLA printer so you can just batch print them. And because the plate size is so big, well, that means you could probably print in half the time on any other machine because you can put all of your models on one plate versus on two or three plates on a different machine. So the included material profiles on the USB drive are for the Apex Maker Fast Resin. Now there's far too many settings for me to talk about here, so you can find them on screen right now. And these profiles are probably going to be a very good baseline for you to go to if you're going to try and dial in a different resin. What I will say though is that I have used the Creality Fast Resin on this machine and I used the Apex Maker Fast Resin profiles. I didn't tweak anything and it printed just fine. 
So during my testing with the Apex Maker X1, I drilled quite a few holes in this machine because I wanted to install my resin laps. I also removed quite a few body panels because unfortunately I crushed the resin spout between the vat and the screen which resulted in me crushing the screen. Well Apex Maker thankfully sent me out a brand new screen because of that and well it gave me the opportunity to look inside the machine. Now I want to be very very clear in this, I am the one that personally damaged the screen. This is not an issue with the Apex Maker X1. This is all on me. When I was installing the resin vat, I crushed the spout into the screen. Definitely not an issue with the X1. But the reason why I'm telling you all of this is because I have personally had a very good look at the inside of this machine as well as I've had to remove the panels and I know how easy it is to remove the screen and install a brand new one. And at 2000 lifetime hours, you can safely assume that the screen will need to be replaced if you're a heavy user and replacement of this screen is very, very easy. I'm very impressed with the way that Apex Maker has done this. Should you ever need to replace your screen? Well, I honestly think that the layman could install a brand new screen into the X1 in under 15 minutes from start to finish. So because this is my final review of this machine, I also must give you my very important caveats. And well, the first one is the sheer size of the screen, which of course is one of the major reasons why everyone wants to purchase the X1. I hate that I have to say this, but you really, really need to stop and think with your brain and not your hobbyist heart and mind, because this machine is massive. So just stop for a second and think where this printer is going to live, because when the lid is open at its largest size, the printer is 20 inches wide, 30 inches deep, and 45 inches tall. Not very many people have a space in their home that can support a printer that big. So this might sound like a joke, but I promise it's not. I highly recommend you take a tape measure and you walk around your home or your hobby space and just see if you have a place that this thing can sit. So the next caveat is going to deal with the size of this machine once again. And that is that you're going to have to estimate the total running costs because this machine can get very expensive to operate. So I don't have an Apex Maker Wash and Cure Station, so I don't know how much IPA is going to fit inside there. I've personally been washing my prints in a five gallon bucket and well, it's not going to take five gallons of IPA to wash your prints. However, in the US, five gallons of IPA is going to run you about 80 to $125, depending on where you purchase it. Because this printer is so big, you also need to consider the cost of resin and how much resin you're going to use. Because in the slicer, it's really, really easy to just maximize the size of a model and print it bigger. So this kind of feels silly to relate it, but I'm going to relate the X1 to a sports car because a lot of people, they can afford to purchase a sports car, but they can't afford to own it, meaning they can't afford the maintenance costs or the, just the total running costs in general. So that is going to be a decision that only you have the power to answer for yourself. So I honestly think the X1 is an incredible, incredible machine. And for me personally, it is absolutely a no brainer. Does it have some quirks? Well, yes, like everything, this is going to have some quirks involved with it. But just because I say that this has some quirks doesn't mean that this printer isn't the best resin printer on the consumer market for me personally. I believe that this machine is so good. If I wasn't a 3D printer collector, I honestly would probably never have another resin 3D printer. That's how good this thing is to me. Really, honestly, Apex Maker deserves all the love that they can get for this product. Please just understand that at the time of filming this, the Apex Maker X1, it is a Kickstarter project. And while I have personally had a very, very positive experience working with the Apex Maker team, I do trust them, but again, this is a Kickstarter project, so you will be backing this at your own risk. I do have another video with the X1, and it's my initial thoughts. If you guys wanna hear that, please click the link up here, or go to my channel and you can find the video there.